Welcome back to Vedanza Disc Golf. It has been a long four days. I wanna give you a quick, ooh, the sun is bright over here. Sheesh, chill out, buddy. But I've started my time here on the road, living in the van again for I think another four or five months and playing a bunch of tournaments. Didn't happen as fast as I wanted. And we'll talk about that here in a second, but I have to let you know as well that this video is brought to you by Flippy Disc Golf. A little bit more on that later, but we need to start talking about my bag because it had to change a little bit. Now, I know if you guys watch my In The Bag, you might be like, what the heck, why did your bag change? And if you watch that In The Bag, it's still completely valid. And one of the things that I had said in that video is that I wanted my molds to be able to be carried with me from both elevation in Denver, 5,000 feet above sea level. I played a tournament at 7,000 feet already this year, as well as here at sea level, like in Kansas City. I'm right now like 30 minutes north of Kansas City at a really beautiful place called Paradise Point Park, I think. There's three courses on here. We play two of them for the tournament because this tournament is four rounds in two days. And we'll talk about my practice and like my plans for that. I'm still putting with the exact same Pures. I really love Pures for putting. And down here, they got so much more glide. I've switched up a little bit of my putting style, which you guys will see here in a second, including my step putts, and I'm feeling a little more accurate. And we're still throwing the same gold line pier, but here, instead of it just being a dead straight guy, it's a flip up and hold so a little bit of turn. So really, really solid disc. Still throwing the same exact Envy as well, except this one, when I put it on flex lines, it just holds the flex line. And let me tell you about Flippy for a second, and then we're gonna get into kind of the main thing that's different between elevation and sea level. Now you guys might've noticed that this is actually all new Flippy gear, and they've recently added a bunch of new kind of performance gear to their site. This jersey is a little bit more moisture wicking even than their last one. The other one is very comfortable and has some moisture wicking properties as well, but this is much more like the traditional jersey style, the Flippy Soul Pro. Again, Yes, really solid and some UV properties. They also have shorts. I got the board shorts, which are over the knee because you guys know I like my shorts really short because then it makes me not look as short as I actually am. My hair's absolutely insane because I've been wearing hats all day, but they also have polos, which are very comfortable. Everything that I have is a medium uh, and I am a medium like for everything that I wear anyways. Uh, this isn't like that same Soul Pro fabric, which is the same moisture wicking properties. So this feels like very comfortable to play in and swing in. I've also washed these a little bit like to see how they handle after a wash and everything is really solid. And I like personally that these are a little bit more understated and if you couldn't tell I actually just noticed this these are baskets this pattern and then one more new thing in their lineup are these hoodies and these honestly are a little bit smaller hoodies than the last ones the last one I have a medium and it runs like a medium and a half this one runs very true to size like a medium which is a little bit tight to swing so you might want to order up if you really like playing in it especially if you have other layers on and one other thing that I noticed is that the strings when they came they were like down to here but they were tied the exact same way so I was able to just cut them up but all this new flippy gear you still get the same discounts if you use my code linked in the description. Everything is still customizable. They still have the old stuff as well, including the cute little dad hats. If you support the companies who support me on the channel, it really helps me to be able to come out here, make trips like these, because without your guys' support and without the support of Flippy, it'd be really hard for me to be out on the road full time for these next couple months, especially still having an apartment back in Denver, which leads us to like the first major changes. And I'm definitely keeping this thing. So the sun's going down and it's starting to get a little chilly, but yeah, you'll see me wearing these during the tournaments for sure. They are very comfortable. I also realized I didn't really tell you guys a lot about like what I actually bring to my tournaments when I play them. Set these down. And I've really been liking both my Renew bag and my Discology bags, so who knows which one I'll use. The next disc is my Get Freaky. I really got along with this during my last tournament in Denver because I put in a lot of work with it. So it's, it is gonna be back in the bag and I'm still liking it. It's much more like straight to finish. I might wanna get a more stable zone, but we might be able to get our hands on that in a month or so. We'll have to see. I suck at that. <laughs> Three mids stayed the same. Pathfinder is the same. I, if you guys saw my video a couple days ago where I went and played Black Hoof, please don't watch it. I played like the worst round that I've ever played at disc golf. Not ever, but it felt like it. This one is nice now. It'll flip up, it'll hold some turn. Really glidey, beautiful straight mid. The Pathfinder Ultra, still very stable. Really liking this forehand, backhand. The big thing, oh, I was gonna say this. The big thing that changes with discs isn't the start or end of the flight, it's the mid flight. Because there's so much air for stuff to glide on here, this is just my conjecture. It might be completely not true. But because there's so much air for things to glide in here, like the Ultra, if I put it on turn, in Denver, it's gonna hold a turn and pan out and give a big S at about like 300 feet. And it might not go a lot farther here, but the thing that's gonna happen is it's gonna go much more to the right before it fights out because that mid flight is just elongated because of how much glide there is. So if something flips up and turns, it's gonna stay on that turn for much longer before it comes out of it. Even though if you give it the same amount of height, it's gonna have the same start and end, maybe a little bit faster to flip up and a little slower 
to fade out, but the mid flight is the real uh, difference. So if you're going between elevations, maybe that'll help you. Maybe you think that's a lie, and it very much might be because I made it up. And then the last one is a new origin. This is actually a Midnight Prowl 2. I got this from David at Apollo Disc Golf, and this one is just more stable of an origin to the one that I had in my bag. Like that one is like, whew, bye bye. This one is kind of like what that origin was up in Denver. And this meta plastic with this guy, I don't know. This combination of plastic and stamp is my favorite. So I stole two of them out of his inventory when I went over his house. But this thing, especially because this tournament that I'm going to tell you about in a second, there's a lot of like wooded holes. Not as many like crazy wooded courses, but but like the front nine of, or front 10 of like one of these courses is just like super wooded, under 300 feet. Like this goes a lot farther than that, but in a low ceiling, I can just punch it there and this disc is, you're gonna see, be seeing this beauty a lot. I love this disc right now. So we're going to the fairways, but I gotta tell you like what the heck happened to me because the van, I wanted to get some new tires because we put like almost 50,000 miles on the tires and they had like, they were all terrain tires so the lugs were massive so they made so much road noise and we need an alignment. With the Firestone, I was like, hey, we need this. They called me, they're like, okay, no big deal, but your tire rods probably need to get done. And they're like, we're gonna keep, need to keep it overnight. And this was Monday. And I was like, I really wanted to drive like five hours tonight and then get to Kansas City really early on Tuesday. Like give myself Tuesday and Wednesday to play courses that I was not gonna play in the tournament. Thursday, Friday, I can do my two practice rounds each day, similar to my tournament. I was like, I'm not gonna do it. And so I was gonna get it and get the tire rods done in the Kansas City. An hour later, I'm like, I look up what happens. Look up a video of like what happens when your tie rods blow. And I was like, I don't wanna do that in a van. I kinda of don't wanna die in case that happens. So I called him back, I was like, okay, go ahead, let's do it. And throw out an oil change, whatever, because they could do that the same day. Like, okay, should be done by midday on Tuesday. It's midday Tuesday, I have the whole like house ready to go. I pack up all the orders and everything. Hopefully you guys are getting your apparel boxes now. Everything like packed up, ready to go. And it's like three o'clock and I hadn't been, I hadn't gotten a call from them. They said that they're gonna call in the morning. And so I call them at 3.30 and they're like, oh yeah, uh, they got here late, we can't do it today. Oh, we're gonna need to keep your van overnight. I was like, are you kidding me? I need to be in Kansas City early on Wednesday. Like I wanna get around in Hayes, Kansas, which is five hours from Denver, five hours from Kansas City, so I can get around in the day, like start learning how discs fly at sea level. Luckily, they call me first thing in the morning the next day, say it's done, get it. They forgot to fill up my rear tires because they have two different tire pressures in a big van like this. Go back, because I was like, why is my light still on? They're like, oh, we just forgot to fill it up. They still don't fill it up all the way, so I have to go to a gas station and refill it. I leave at 4 p.m. that day, because I had like some other things to run around and do, make sure like nothing in my house is gonna stink. I got into Kansas City at 3 a.m. yesterday morning, Woke up early, filmed that video of Black Hoof that you guys saw that I posted a couple days ago. Then I went and played my first practice round, met my awesome caddies who will be the camera and the bag for this weekend for all four rounds. Went and took a shower, edited the video, went to sleep, seven hours later, woke up, went to my second practice round, which was at La Benite, which is gonna be on Apollo Disc Golf's channel on Monday. And then after that, went to lunch with my buddy and then came and played these two practice rounds. So. Luckily, I feel like my bag is a little bit more figured out. I'm shooting this video and I'm gonna go edit a video for today, which is yesterday as you're watching this, and then I'm gonna edit this video for tomorrow, which is the first day of the tournament, which is in like less than 10 hours. Ooh, that was a big ramble. Let's get back to my bag. So, getting into fairways, pretty similar, honestly. Still have this color glow strike. This one I was really getting along with. Still pretty stable, um, but definitely, like, like I said, mid-flight, it's gonna hold the turn a lot longer here, but it will kind of fight out of it. Kind of like Eagle-esque is how I think about this strike. Maybe like a Vodum, maybe not quite that stable, but similar. This strike, you guys might remember from last year, I was throwing this all over the place. You also might remember it from my second round of 303, or first round where I was like, oh, I'm gonna throw this hyzer flip it, and then I just threw it straight OB. That's because this disc down here is the perfect flight. Just Heiser flip up to straight, hold it, maybe a little bit turn, but probably not, just hold straight for like 350, 390 feet. Love this thing. This is gonna be used a lot this weekend. Only two heats now, one very flippy and one my most stable heat. But this gets me into another predicament because my Honor and Firebird, surprisingly they're flying more similar than I thought. I'm not throwing this significantly less far than I'm throwing my Honor, which I thought that I would. And this one on forehand, I do not trust here. Cause my forehand's like, I've tried to throw like flex forehands with this. Maybe I can hit it flat and have it push a little bit farther, but I'm really loving this Firebird because I also added a flat top Firebird. I have a couple that I'm thinking about rotating through the bag. This is one that David just gave me, just a max weight one, which I'm really just like the tie dye, but there's a green one that I have that I'll probably throw in the bag to replace it. I'm not hundred percent sure which one I want to throw right yet, but this is the one I was throwing today and kind of liking it. So I don't know if I need the honor anymore, honestly. It's gonna stay in the back for now and I'm gonna need to figure it out. But it also could be that like I'm throwing significantly shorter today because I'm running on like a combined 12 hours of sleep over two days and pl I played five 18 hole rounds that were basically all practice rounds where I shot like six shots a hole. So I'm gonna try to get some sleep tonight, but we might not be throwing far this tournament. <laughs> and I think the biggest change is in the distance boys. I, in Denver, throw distance drivers all over the place because you can just highs around everything. And I had like a very good understanding of, like what my discs did. And so getting here, I was like, like I kind of wanted to change them out because I would throw them and they would just completely not do what I thought. 
and I didn't really have the time to like relearn my mental understanding of what that disc did, so I just changed up the discs, some of them. Faro was very flippy in Denver, way flippier here, but still a really good disc. Probably won't throw it that much this tournament. Not really a lot of holes that I need to throw this thing on because my Echo Star Destroyer, of which I've lost like two in the past week now, unfortunately, is this new uh, orange Jessica Weiss one, which I really like because flippy here, but like flippy bomber here. Like can't really throw it into a headwind, but this is probably my farthest flying disc in my bag consistently. Flip it up. I can trust it in a little tiny bit of wind, but not a ton of wind. Really like this. Uh, and I got another Jess in the bag because Jesses are the best. If you haven't tried it, if you throw destroyers and like you don't throw super far and you want like a bomber one, these Jessica Weiss Echo, something about this mold, so money. And then this, my Ricky two time is still in the bag, but here it's much more of a flip up, a destroyer instead of throw it flat, hold flat. It's flip up, doesn't really turn too much, but it'll flip up and hold. I'm not sold on this one. I would be open to putting another destroyer in the bag in place of this one, but I really, this one's just kind of getting it done for me and I went in the water at Badlands for this, so it's gotta go back in the bag. Then I have an SDS destroyer, shout out Matt for hooking it up. This one is a max weight, kind of beefy guy, encroaching on Calvin territory, but a little bit more glide. The biggest thing I was noticing the difference was with my Calvin destroyer, which you'll see next, versus this one, is when I threw this one on a big ending line, so it did not bite out of it as fast, so just it just pushes a little bit more on that line. Don't know if there's enough of a difference, probably won't be seeing that one, this one that much, but maybe. And then the last one is, 2021 Calvin Heimberg Destroyer. This one, super pop toppy. Really love this disc. Not like the most insane beefcake, and that's something that I might need. Like, this is a super beefy disc, especially because I'm very comfortable throwing on Heiser. The only thing is like, if I need a super, super beefy disc into a headwind that I have to throw a turnover line, this will definitely come out of it, maybe not as fast. And that's the only reason why, the only disc I might potentially think about adding to the bag is something like a Juggernaut. Probably not a Juggernaut. I got this one from Joel Freeman when he beat me in that tournament last week. I'll, I'll throw it for you one time. This is a funky disc. We got a right to left wind. I'm gonna throw this on Annie. I'm, I'm gonna throw it in my sandals. Why not? Whatever. But you'll you'll see you'll see what I'm talking about. Like it just comes out of it and does not go anywhere. It's a solid disc. I mean, you can push it far, but it's similar to my Calvin's. Just definitely doesn't go as far and not as glidy. But that blue Calvin is like the perfect miss. It's kind of exactly why I love the Cloudbreaker from Discmania. Because when I reviewed it, I said it was like the perfect Calvin destroyer, but I compared it to the 2023 Calvin's, whereas this run of the 2021's are so, so, so money. So this is what I'm bagging right now in my super overstable, super glidy, super reliable one that hopefully one day is just my flat destroyer. But not today, because today I did not throw very far. Like I was hitting 399, but it was taking everything. <laughs> Quick overview of the tournament and the extra things that I have in my bag. But the tournament first, this one is a two day four rounder at four different courses here in Kansas City. First one is gonna be at Waterworks, super famous course, really fun. All these courses are ones that in all my practice shots, I've shot under par. So I know it's possible. Uh, and that's with like having some bad putts, like on my first shots, obviously, and with continuing to learn these discs. But I actually, I'm feeling, I'm glad that I played as much as I did these last two days, even though my arm, it doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel hurt or tired. I'm gonna do some Theragun. I'm gonna make sure that like I eat enough and drink enough water tonight. But yeah, first is Waterworks, then La Benite. And then after that, it's gonna be both these courses at Paradise Point. We only play Woodhenge and the one that is not the Beaver one. I don't remember what that one is. I love playing in the woods. Like I much prefer it to these courses that you guys have been seeing in Denver. It is just learn, especially that video two days ago, trying to learn my discs while playing one of the tougher courses in the area. Did not go super well, but that was like, I'm glad I put that video together. It's kind of fun content, to be honest. <laughs> but taking the time to kind of sit back, and unfortunately I didn't record any of the practice rounds because I had to do four practice rounds in a day and just, adding the camera adds like an extra hour at least to every single one and helps me to, it's harder for me to think about the practice round. And so if like my tournaments are like one course or two courses, you definitely will get those. And it's just been hard like having to truncate my whole timeline. So I hope you guys understand that. I carry water bottles with me all over the place. Towels and like whale sacks chalk bags. I kind of want to get like a chum chalk bag or something that's like super, super chalky. I kind of prefer those ones. Towels, obviously. And then, funny, because of Denver, I actually have some lotion in here. And then I have a like a phone tripod, which I really didn't use today. I might have, I should have taken out a couple times, but I was trying to get in the zone. And then phone stuff and like protein bars. I carry a lot of food with me during my tournaments just to make sure that like, I never eat it all, but I always want to have the option because I would hate for myself to play poorly because I wasn't fueling myself. Obviously, got to have some minis. I need to reorder some minis. And then up top here, just a rangefinder 
more minis, keys, phone. Pretty simple. I don't have like a lot of crazy stuff. I don't even have a, a disc retriever here to have a lot of extra discs. But this tournament, I'm, I'm so excited to be back on the road and to be playing at sea level. It's like a lot more fun to watch your disc fly here than it is in Denver because you don't have to feel like you're throwing your arm out. And that's one of the things I've been learning as well, like down tempoing on the tee pad. It's hard for me to think about expectations for this tournament because this is a qualifier for Des Moines Challenge. So if I get top two, which is like my goal, obviously, I'll get into Des Moines Challenge. I'll obviously have to pay for them, whatever, but it's hard for that to be the reality and for me to know I did not have enough time to get ready. But when you don't have expectations, sometimes you play really well. That's what happened in my first round last week. My putt, I've changed to a strictly inline putt, really trying to to get that ready. I didn't have enough time to practice putting because my van was in the shop and my van had my basket in it and I wasn't walking distance to any courses. And I didn't want like Uber to a course to practice putting. So I only really got an hour or two of practice putting in for this tournament, but I felt, I feel a little bit better on my step putts. Everything is staying closer to the basket and I'm also giving things better chances and like giving it better heights, which I'm really stoked about. Let me range this. 670, that's really impressive. Definitely hoping that in my future tournaments, I am uh, preparing a little bit better. But this one, I mean, gratefully feels a little out of my control. But of course, like one of my biggest goals is to cash at the event. I'd love to have at least 1,000 rated round, if not 1,000 rated tournament. I've had at least 1,000 rated round in all my tournaments, except for one so far, or two out of my three, I guess. I mean, all these, all these seem gettable. Like, I can birdie every single hole on all three of these courses. Maybe except for hole one at the second one, which is like 430 feet into a headwind today. If it's not into a headwind, I think I got it, but, and there's like a 820 foot one into a headwind on that one as well. It's like a little mice down there. But other than those, everything is pretty gettable. Most of the courses are really good. I think Labanit, I'm not the biggest fan of. It feels like Denver disc golf for a lot of it. It's like, hey, there's a basket 390 feet away. Throw a hyzer at it. It's like, okay. Not nearly as fun as some of these super wooded ones with like tricky lines and shots. But yeah, I'm excited for this week. I know my bag has had to change a little bit, but that's exactly why I wanted the molds that I did because I feel like my bag is super dialed for this course and this game. All these courses, like I feel like I have all the tools that I need to succeed. I'm really not missing any discs out of my bag. I need to go get some rest, edit a video. Hopefully you guys enjoy the journey. As you guys are watching this, PDGA Live should be updated and I should be out on the course or maybe just done with my rounds and then two rounds on Sunday. Go ahead and follow the tournament if you'd like. Hopefully I get aces on all the whole ones from all my tournaments from here on out. But if you want to check out the craziness that was that round. Check that out right down there. Thank you so much Flippy Disc Golf for sponsoring this video. If you pick any of it up, go ahead and use my code link in the description and I will see you guys in the next one, which will be tournament coverage. Four tournaments, probably going to do ter coverage over three days. Probably first round one day on uh, Sunday and then round two and three on Monday and round three on Tuesday and then we go somewhere else the week after. Hey, I got it right. That's that. Okay, love you guys. Bye.